Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we're peeking in on the hurricanes. We'll look at the James Webb Space Telescope Wide Field Composite. We've got an excellent story on the AMOC and cooling and atmospheric vortices created by solar storms. We're starting with the last 24 hours on our star in UV light from the Solar Dynamics Observatory. Sizable coronal hole on the south, dark. We got bright, active regions and several plasma filaments. Those are the thinner, dark, snake-like ropes wriggling in the corona. While a couple of the larger sunspot groups, which also have complexity, are departing on the south, we have new ones incoming on the north, top left. Maybe even more behind the limb based on coronal brightness and even further to the north, a towering plasma filament is cresting onto the Earth-facing half as well. I've dropped in the Earth scale there for a size comparison. Beautiful. Folks, while the formed storms are dissipating or weakening as they head north, the system appears ripe for further development. By the way, with this much activity happening here, it screams more than just the atmosphere, but crustal contribution to the atmospheric energy. Could be an earthquake risk area in the weeks ahead there, in addition to all of these tropical storms that are forming. Up next, we're going from a James Webb super zoom to pulling back out to reveal the width which James Webb has scoped the cosmos at that level of detail. And at the end of the video, a Hubble deep field is put top left in the corner. You can see it's not really a comparison. Webb is changing quite a bit. Up next, a few days ago, we shared the Geo Corona Carruthers mission. Here is what its orbit around the L1 point in space will look like as it stares at the Earth's atmosphere in UV light. Critical mission, as we said before, but hold that thought just a moment about the upper atmosphere, because we first need to come down to the oceans, where we have an excellent paper suggesting that not only does the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation cause massive cooling via heat transport shutdown when it loses its gusto, but it causes amplified cooling due to atmospheric processes, some of which even counteract their emissions heating mechanism. When this already failing ocean flow shuts down a bit more, it's the movie The Day After Tomorrow, a rapid Heinrich event level cooling and that's what's coming to our planet soon. Now we'll come back to the upper atmosphere and folks that Geo Corona Carruthers mission will help with these details too. The upper atmospheric vortices created by solar storms. The electric input causes a pretty severe working of the flow patterns and dynamics, not to mention the energetics of the global electric circuit. There are only three solar storms for which this has ever been recorded, April 2023, May 2024, and October 2024. All these storms also produced major geomagnetic storm conditions but without major solar events. It also suggests that a bigger one would cross a threshold of major atmospheric disruption, and frankly, there's almost no telling what that would do to the layers below. Folks, pole shift conference this weekend, blacksmithing class next weekend, prepper super event two days to close out the month, rest of the year is really no different either, conferences and prepper days and special events the rest of the year. After the documentary comes out this fall, tickets to the events are probably going to sell out a lot more quickly, so it may be time to get over to us sooner rather than later. Check the events, register, and book your stay at ObserverRanch.com, and we greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.